390 Wagon Master here. All right, today in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Cobra 138 XLR. This is pre-Cobra 148, and this is after the 138A. So yeah, pretty cool. It's a unit in UPD 858 chassis. Oh, first off, I wanna thank uh, Steve579 up in North Salt Lake. Steve579 uh, donated this to me and um, he was talking on it, I've heard it. It didn't sound bad, it wasn't warbling or crusty or anything like that. It didn't sound great, but that could have been the mic and I'm not really sure what he was using. And if I remember right, he didn't like the way this thing sounded, if I remember correctly. So we'll see what's going on there. Um, I haven't fired this up yet. I kind of wanted to do it just on camera. Actually, I have a few more radios we're gonna bite into as well in this same format. Okay, so here's what we've got on the 138XLR. Dynamite, volume, squelch, RF gain, mode switch, voice lock, or clarifier, um, independent ANL and noise blanker, CBPA, uh, tone control, and dimmer control. Now I had one of these back when I was about 15, and that was about 78. And if I remember right, these radios came out mid or late 77 and run ran through 78. I don't really know anything beyond that. Now, I remember my 138, when it worked, it was great, but it always there was always something going on with it. So, um, I, you know what, I don't even know, I haven't even looked at the serial number or the production number, so I'm not sure if this is an early one or not, but we're gonna find out, and uh, we're gonna take it for its first test fire, if I can get that out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the screws out, and then I'm gonna put power and an antenna to it, so I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, I've got the screws out and uh, I put power to it and external speaker. And let's set her up. All right. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Dynamite squelch. Ah. Okay, he's on AM. A and L noise blanker off. A and L on. Noise blanker, that switch is kind of rough. Let's check outside van. Well, that's a pretty, it's pretty clean actually. Um, it seems like it might be a little deaf on sideband, just maybe. But a little bit of alignment's good. A little alignment will take care of that. All right. Well. Uh, Let's take a look inside. Yeah, it's got a weird, uh, it's got a weird sound to it. Okay, well, love these chassis. Let me grab a screwdriver here. Let's just, uh, oh, I'm using the wrong one. Where'd my number two go? These little clips usually come out. Stay in there, I should say. So yeah, the 138 is a pretty interesting radio. These uh, 858 chassis were awesome after they got all the bugs worked out of them. So it's relay switching. So this is pretty basic. Um, I'm trying to see if I can see any mods or anything right off the bat. So I'm not sure. This is one of the repairs. There was some frequency drift, and what you would do is you would need to replace that. That was in a service bulletin from back in the day. And I'm not really, you know, I've never really seen the factory. I don't really know if this is factory or not. Because the uh, the dealers were told to uh, do this mod if they came in for warranty service. And it, however, it has Loctite on it, that green epoxy stuff. So I'm gonna say this is factory. What's the serial number on this? Like, This is in like the eight million series, it looks like. 
So it's this radio is probably from the vintage when all of those mods and repairs were actually just well they weren't mods or repairs anymore. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Relay switching. So if you guys have ever seen microphones that see the have the E and the R on them, you would put your microphone on R for this one. It's our little relay. Sometimes you gotta bite into those and clean them up, but for the most part, these uh, later unit and relays were pretty darn good from what I remember. Well, I don't really see very much of the repair of mods. See if our diode's been clipped and all that. It doesn't look like it's been modded, but I could be wrong. But uh, I'll take a more in-depth look. So here's what I'm gonna, let's see here. Let me get my Bubbles glasses here. Something's been done over here. Oh yeah, she's been, she's been peaked and tweaked, boys. She's been peaked and tweaked up there. Coils are spread. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Anything else offhand? No, that looks to be right. Okay, well, we'll see. But yeah, back here, somebody's been messing with this. This is... This is definitely with them spread coils and everything. This thing's been uh, slightly golden screwdrivered, I would say. But uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. Nice. Well, let's put it on a meter. Okay, so I got a mic hooked up to it. And uh, let's see, we're on AM, AM 11, so let's just run, ah, just for giggles, we'll, we'll run over here to 20. AM on 20. See what we're doing here. Two, four, five, six. We're doing uh, six watt DK. <whistles> Yellow. Oh, turn that dynamite back up. A little bit of forward swing. All right, that's on AM. Let's try side bands. Lower side band. Hello, radio. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. So about eight. Eight watts, eight watts, eight watts. Hello, eight watts. There we go. Yeah, it's about eight watts. Okay, cool. Uh, let's turn on a monitor. Uh, let's see. What do I have here? on a radio with a good receiver. Uh, we'll go to AM and see what AM sounds like. Let me go up on that one. Let's see, AM. Okay, let's see if we can hear it. Hello radio, one, two, three, one, two, three. Wow, that's an audio monster. Hello, radio. It's a one, two, three. Yeah, that's an audio monster. Good lord. Uh, let's see here. Let's go on sideband. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the this radio on the eight. I'll leave that on. Let's see. No, I'll turn that on sideband, lower side, and then I will key this one down and move the voice lock here. Let's see if it drifts around. Yeah, it's locked. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. It looked like it was locked in there. But, uh, all right. Let's try single sideband here. Hello, radio. Hello, radio. Hello, radio. Hello, radio. Hello, radio. One, two, three. Ooh, got a little cosmic snap there. Okay, I put the camera down for a second to clarify. Hello, radio one, two, three, radio one, two, three. Wow, that thing is, uh, the audio on that thing is jacked up. Let's put it in some PEP feel-good Wattsuses. 
Hello, Radio 1. Hello, Radio. Hello, hello, hello. Radio 1, 2, 3. Big old 2, 0. Big old, uh, no, we're not doing quite doing 20. We're doing about uh, 16. So, yeah, about 16. Into the dummy. PEP feel good style. Let's try AM in the PEP feel good mode. Let's see what we're getting there. Hello, radio. Hello, radio. About that same thing. 16 to 18. So, pretty interesting. Okay, so uh, this thing needs. Uh, you know, I'm just going to actually align it. I really think that's all I'm going to do to it. Uh, I mean, I'll go. Th I'll I'll go over on the other side of the board and take a look at that. Well, you know what? Let's do that right now. All right. Let's see what we've got here. No, that looks pretty good. Uh, somebody's been in here, and I wondered about that because when I was looking at the radio. Earlier, I noticed the meter was kind of cockeyed, so maybe we've had a bulb replacement, something like that, a lamp replacement, maybe. Maybe this thing's got a lot of hours on it. I'm uh, feeling pretty good about this radio, really. So as far as physical condition goes, I think it's in pretty darn good shape. Yeah, it's in, it's in good shape. Um, no major scratches, dings. Uh, the lettering is still good. So I feel like this radio would be worth putting some time in. And I just happen to be, I feel, I mean, so far, lucky enough that I'm not going to have to put uh, too much into this. You know, at least it's not DOA. But um, I will go in, uh, we'll do an alignment, and then we'll come back in and fix this meter. I'm 50-50. Some of these radios, um, so like if this thing was kind of a beater, I would have no problem putting a white LED in there. I'd have no problem with that at all. Um, however, I feel like it looks pretty good. If the radio comes out the way I want it to, and depending on my mood, I'll probably just put an, another incandescent bulb, but something a little with a little more heft to it, right? Okay, so the dimmer was... That was making some noise. So anyway, um, yeah... The dimmer was down. Let's check out them digits. Let's see if we got anything skipping around. No, that seems to be pretty good. You gotta kind of force it a little bit to try to mess up. So, what I've found with this is you just do solder joints on this because what will happen is the mechanical rotary knob here after years of doing this kind of stuff up and down left and right you know if it's in a vehicle or something it'll work the solder joints uh, sometimes but anyway that looks all pretty good I mean we have all the segments in there where I'm missing nothing dude um, so yeah let's uh, let's do an alignment on it try to get them coils back uh, the way they should be and we'll clean all that up and we'll see what happens here. This is all original, so like the finals don't look like they've been messed with. This is this is this looks factory to me. So yeah, nothing uh nothing going on with this. Jeez, I might have lucked out. Thanks, Steve. Dude, you're a good man. Yeah, the uh 138 has a little bit of history with me, and I've kind of always wanted to get another one. And I just never have done that. And um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, I've got a Roy 639 that John, uh, World Radio 038 slash uh, UDX 38, brought over. Um, and I'm going to check that out because I think Steve's interested in a 639. Because. Dude, when somebody kicks you down a radio like that, I mean, this is not a basket case so far. I don't know. My next video <laughs> may be different. I may be cussing and swearing this thing at this thing, but uh, so far, so good. I'm feeling pretty good about it. And the audio is really hot in here, so I'm not sure if they took out a uh, shunt transistor or anything like that. It kind of acts that way, but we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so stay tuned. For the update video on this classic, the Cobra 138 XLR, this is a classic radio. 
you don't really hear many uh, folks using these. Um, and I don't really think a lot of people, you know, the 148 I think is outshined the 138. And the 148 is no slouch. In fact, I think it's probably a little more refined. But uh, anyway, you know, those 2816 chassis were, were decent for the most part. But uh, yeah, we'll check this out. And I'm not sure. I think this is actually a dual conversion. So that'll be that'll be interesting. I'll have to do my homework on that. All right, guys, please uh, leave uh, your thoughts, comments, suggestions down below. Um, I'm not going to do any channel mods to this thing or anything. Uh, I will more than, well, I will unlock the clarifier. We'll make that happen. But I'm not going to add any super diodes or anything crazy, you know. I'm good with a half to three quarters of a KC up and a couple hundred cycles down or whatever, you know, like 500 up, maybe five or 700 down. That's usually about what these things do. And, um, you know, that's it, just so I can catch up to guys you know, I know I know that some of you, uh, some of my viewers don't like it when I unlock clarifiers, but if you work a lot of sideband, you literally have to, and um, so that's probably what I do. But no channels or anything like that. I would I would just keep this the way it is. Hell, I might try to look for a Digiscan. That would be cool. Wouldn't that not be cool? Put a Digiscan UFO Elite or something on here. Oh yeah, I have to dig one of those up. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.